Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another lesson on English idioms. Learn English idioms. Today, we are talking about idioms that have to do with time. Let's get going. Up until now, we have been approaching idioms uh, where we just talk about one idiom per lesson. We kind of had the approach of... Uh, maybe just learning one idiom per day. I think we even at one point called the series an idiom a day. And uh, that worked out fairly well. And I think we'll continue to do some of our lessons that way. But you know, there are some idioms that just kind of fall into a grouping. And today's lesson is like that. Uh, idioms about time. You've probably heard some of these. Some of them might be new to you as we go through our lesson. But let's check them out. The first one is, time's up. Time's up. When someone says that, what do you think they mean? You know, you might be looking at your watch. You might be looking up in the sky. What, what does he mean, time's up? Well, it simply means that your allotted time is finished. You might be working on an exam and taking a test maybe at the driver's center and all of a sudden the teacher or the instructor hollers out okay time's up time's up it just means that if you were given 15 minutes to write the exam the 15 minutes is over and you have to stop time's up another one very similar to this is out of time out of time. You are all out of time. Your time has passed. There's nothing more that you can do on this task now. You're out of time. Out of time. You have to stop. Out of time. Make time. Make time. So what does it mean to make time? You know, a day has 24 hours exactly. How can you make more time than what is allotted for every day? How can you make extra time? Well, you can't really make any extra time, but what you might do is readjust your schedule a little bit to allow for something. So you might have a routine every day. You follow a schedule and you don't have time for that new friend because you are busy doing all of these tasks in a regulated way every day and, and you just don't have time for that new friend. Well, what you could do is make time. You could look over your schedule and say, well, you know, maybe I, I could skip that one today or... Maybe I don't have to do this five days a week. Maybe I could just do it two days a week, and that would free up some time. Here's another one. Free up some time. You're, you're just making time in your schedule to allow for something new. You're making time. Another one that you might have heard is killed time. Killed time. Oh, I'm just here killing time. Well, what do you mean, killing? What, what are you doing to the time? <laughs> How, are you hurting time? No, it simply means that you are spending your time in such a way that you're not being that productive. You're kind of maybe waiting for something to happen. You might be waiting for the bus to come. And you're just there on the bench and you're just kind of killing time until the bus arrives. You're not really doing anything productive. You might be you know, playing one of your games on your phone. You're just kind of killing time waiting for the bus to come. Waiting for your friend to come. Just relaxing and killing time. Wasting time wasting time. That's kind of like killing time too. When you're killing time, you're kind of wasting time, aren't you? Unless you need to relax. I think everybody should have 
some time during the day where they just take a break and relax and and uh, not let the stress of life or work uh, overwhelm you. So it's good to take breaks. But when we use the expression wasting time, maybe we're just taking too many breaks, <laughs> right? Or killing too much time waiting for our friends. When we think about how to have a good, healthy life, we should try and create a balance, right? Where you spend a, a certain amount of time doing productive things and a certain amount of time doing things that will help you just unwind and relax and take it easy. Like we learned in a previous lesson on slang words, chilling out. But we have to have that proper balance, right? That proper work-life balance. But sometimes people, if they're not careful, can have too much of one thing and uh, not enough of the other. And your, your life gets out of sync. It gets out of balance. And some people find that they just are wasting too much time in their day doing things that aren't that productive. Save time. Save time. Have you ever heard somebody use this phrase? Oh, I, I took a shortcut to work today and I really saved a lot of time. Or I found a much better way to do the dishes. And it, it's, it's saving me a lot of time to do it this way. Or um, at work. I used to do things a certain way, but now I have a new method. And I'm saving at least a half an hour every day. I'm saving that much time every day. So it's finding a way to be more productive, be more efficient, and uh, allowing you to do things quicker than you used to be able to do. And that way you're saving time in no time. In no time. Have you ever had a friend uh, say that phrase to you? Oh, it, it was no time at all. And wondered what they meant by that? Well, it just is referring to the idea that time went very quickly. Uh, or it didn't take as much time as I thought. I was finished in no time. Don't worry about it. It didn't take me long at all. It was no time at all. And uh, it's just saying that the time seemed very short. It didn't take that much time. Uh, she got there in no time. She got there faster than she thought she would. She took that shortcut, right? And she was there in no time. In no time. How about spare time? What do you do in your spare time? Spare time. What is spare time? Well, if you're really busy doing three jobs in order to pay the bills, <laughs> you, you might not have much spare time. But if you have uh, found a, a good job and you're able to uh, meet the bills by just uh, having that one job, you might come home, you make yourself something to eat, and around 7.30, 8 o'clock, you've got nothing to do nothing uh, important to do. And so you have some spare time. You might have like two hours before you go to bed. You call it spare time. What do you do in your spare time? Some people will say, well, I watch TV in my spare time. Others will say, oh, I like to do a hobby in my spare time. I like to collect stamps or I like to collect coins in my spare time. I like to play computer games in my spare time. What do you do in your spare time? Please try and be on time. Please try and be on time. What does this phrase mean? If your friend asks you, okay, let's, uh, let's meet at the mall tonight around 8.30, and please... Try and be on time. Well, maybe you are known for always being late. 
and uh, the the movie is going to start at 8:45 at the mall and uh, she wants to meet you there at 8:30 but she knows because you're often late that you might not get there till nine o'clock and the movie will have already started, right? And so she tells you, please try and be on time, 8.30. Please try and be on time. One last one that we might talk about. Have you ever heard somebody say, turn back the hands of time? Turn back the hands of of time. And uh, that might be an older expression. I don't know. I, I think I still hear it. Some of the old clocks that people would put on their wall, the little things that show you the time of day were called hands, right? So when people use the phrase, turn back the hands of time, they're talking about turning the clock back. And it's not something that we can really do in real life, but we can when we're maybe telling a story. Uh, maybe you might start out a story like that. Um, you say, now today, let's turn back the hands of time and think about the way things used to be back in the 1960s or the 1920s. Those were exciting times. They called them the Roaring Twenties here in the, the United States and Canada. Let's turn back the hands of time and watch a video about the Wright brothers as they fly their first flight. Let's turn back the hands of time and think about something historic, turning back the hands of time. All right, well, that's uh, it for today's lesson on idioms. This morning, I, I uh, listed out a whole another 20 or 30 idioms that we can talk about. So we'll be uh, releasing more of those. We, uh, you know, sometimes people will write in, they'll see one of our videos and they'll say, oh, I really liked your video. Do you have any more? <laughs> and of course, we, we have uh, hundreds of videos at both Study English with Frank and, and Study English with us for you to watch. The trick on YouTube is finding them, right? Because they're always taking you off to somebody else's video. There's so many exciting videos on YouTube. But if you want to learn English, you got to kind of keep focused. And so a good thing to do, if you want to see more of our videos, just right below this video, you'll see a picture of me. It's in a circle. Just tap on that, and that'll take you to our YouTube channel. And there you'll be able to see lots of videos that we've done. We have now, I think, 40 videos on uh, English idioms alone. And we're planning to do another 20. So if you want to see those as we release those, a good idea is to subscribe to the video, uh, to our channel and uh, ring that little bell and YouTube will let you know each time we release another video on idioms. Also, right at the end of this video, when this video finishes and the credits roll, there'll be a suggested playlist uh, four more idioms. So just tap on that. You'll get a whole series of uh, other videos on English idioms. And I'll also put the link in the description below. So that way you can keep focused on learning English instead of getting taken off to somebody else's uh, wonderful YouTube channel to watch some funny cat videos. All right. <laughs> so uh, I encourage you to keep focused on your task of learning English. And we'll see you next time here at Study English with Frank. So long for now.